Hello guys, this is going to be an installation of the Ghost Cased Smoked version for the Xbox 360. This is a modified case that requires you to open your Xbox 360 as you can see what I'm doing now. This does in fact void your warranty, so beware. <clears throat> um, also, I'm going to be installing the Whisper Legacy um, replacement fans, which uh, due to the technology, it moves more air, it has more... It has more blade mass because of the smaller motors, which allows more air to be moved. The blades are lighter, which gives less resistance to the air. And as a result, it's going to be a quieter operating fan that moves more air. Um, the Legacy is it has a 12 volt um, nitro switch, which allows which allows it to feed off of the DVD drive in the Xbox 360's power output which gives out 12 volts. This in return makes the fan spin faster thus moving more air but in this installation I'm not able to utilize that feature because the LED lights that come with the case that I bought feeds off of the DVD drive too and there's no um, adapters that allow it to feed out to two different uh, ports from that DVD drive power output. So it was either I used the nitro for the the um the whisper fans, or I just used the LED lights for the case. I'd rather I just use the LED lights for the case and just have the whisper fans plugged directly into the the fan output on the motherboard, which fluctuates between five volts to twelve volts depending on the temperature of the Xbox 360. Um, so as you can see right here, I am opening the Xbox 360. I am just taking off the the flaps on the top and in the bottom. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned before. Probably I did, but this is a voiceover of this video. I am not talking as I am performing these actions because the environment that I was in was just too loud for this. You, you're just going to be hearing people screaming and yelling and all that while I was trying to talk. So, yeah, I couldn't do that. So, right now I'm just dusting everything out. Um, the Xbox 360 that, that you see in front of you has been operating since December of 09 so there has been a lot of dust build up and it's never been open this is the first time I've opened this Xbox you can see the warranty sticker right there that I'm trying to remove um yeah so this 360 has been operating for a very long time no problems yet it's been running smooth um the 360s that I've had before I think I've I had three or four that they never the longest living 360 that I had out of those four was they it lasted for nine months and just crapped out. Um, so yeah. So this Xbox 360 is an elite uh, with 120 gigabytes of hard drive space. It has an HDMI out, as you can see. Um, like I said, I bought it in 09. Hasn't given me any problems. So I was like, you know what? Let me just open this thing and just you know kind of mod it. But the warranty for this thing actually isn't over. I still have until December of 09 only with Microsoft in case I do get the three red rings but anything else like with GameStop the warranty's up so I just wanted to just mod this thing just to you know give him give it a, give it basically an aesthetic boost so this clip right here that you're seeing right now has been sped up because I was literally struggling to open this thing and I'm thinking it's because it's the first time it's been open well not the first time since it has to be assembled and all that but since it basically the first time since a user try to open it up again it's going to be a lot more tougher to open this but the case was literally even with the tool that I got that makes it a lot more, a lot more easy to open it was literally just the, the little pins that hold the back part of the case was not given away so it was just it, and it got to the point where I already got past it in this part but it, it was to the point where every time I, try, I flip the Xbox 360 over to tackle the pins up top the f much more bigger pins on the bottom would reattach themselves <laughs> and it, it just frustrated me. It got to the point where I actually cut my finger on the metal chassis of the Xbox 360 and was slightly bleeding all over the place. But yeah, this Xbox 360 is literally a tank. It's to the point where you really... I, right now, I don't worry about, you know, manhandling this thing and breaking anything. As you can see in the video, it took me a while to, like, um to remove some of the connections and stuff because I was just gently trying to remove I didn't want to rip anything apart but right now you can literally I, I I can just really think you could just literally manhandle the this Xbox 360 and nothing will break you would end up hurting yourself before you break the Xbox 360 so um 
if you want to skip this whole part and get <clears throat> to the part where I actually get past, well, it's just right here, anyways. <clears throat> so, um, the chassis is exposed right now, and I'm just gonna unscrew all the the, the torque screws, so I can then remove the case that's on the bottom side of the chassis right now. So when those screws are done, you're gonna see. And I've opened my I've opened a 360 before. As you can see, I'm not sure if you've seen my older modded modded videos and with the temperature and all that. And I don't remember it being this hard to open. So it's been a while since I've opened it. So I was just kind of lost as to why is this thing not opening. So yeah. And for those opening, remember to remove the uh, the DVD drive eject button mechanism thingy. It kind of just snaps out of place. Once again, I, I was gentle with it because I thought it was going to just, I didn't want it to snap in half and then break. So, yeah. And then once that's done, you just f flip it over and then the motherboard is exposed. Uh, like I said before, this 360 has been operating since December of 09. And then, therefore, it has a lot of dust buildup. So, I'm going to just take the compressed air can and just spray out the motherboards just to get any dust that I see out. And also, I'd like to point out, um, I'm not sure at the, off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the motherboard that I have, but it's not the newest motherboards before the Slim, where it has the additional GPU heatsink that protrudes out of the original flat GPU heatsink and then ends up in front of the CPU heatsink. Mine's is an older one where it's um, <coughs> the GPU's heatsink is just independent. <coughs> but, uh... It's been, what, roughly about nearly three years, and this 360 has still been running strong, so I don't know if it's, I just have luck, or maybe this motherboard had um, fixed the potential red rings of death problems, but uh, who cares, uh, I'm just going to pretty much end up prolonging its lifespan some more by adding the, uh, <coughs> the whisper fans, which uh, moves more air circulation than the previous fans. Just blown out some more dust <coughs> because the uh, since I removed the DVD drive, I can see the GPU heatsink and there's a bit of dust in there. All right, time to remove the uh, the air duct to remove the original Xbox 360 fans and replace it with the Whisper Legacy fans. Oh yeah, I was giving the the Xbox 360's motherboard a shake because I thought something came loose and potentially it could have been metal. I didn't want anything to be loose on the motherboard, so I was just shaking it to see if anything was loose and I could be able to see that it's loose and then remove it because I didn't want to short out the motherboard when I plug it up later to see how everything runs. Alright, so the original fans are removed. They're very dusty. Just attaching them for their from their three point the three pin connector. That that connector I just detached it from. Um like I said before, it fluctuates between five volts and twelve volts. It actually it can just go between five and twelve, so five, six, seven, eight, and blah 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 to twelve. Uh like I said before, it depends on the the Xbox three sixties temperature or and or what um the xbox 360 is doing so i'm thinking that the xbox 360 could just be it could be cool but it can boot up a game and then automatically slightly raise the voltage to the f for the fans up to about seven to nine volts when the game is launching even though there's no temperature issues but guaranteed if the temperature reaches a very high point to the xbox 360 i think around 140 to 150 degrees fahrenheit the xbox 360's motherboard would jump kick the fans and feed them 12 volts uh, and then after that, if the Xbox 360 temperature starts to increase, even though the fans are still running at 12 volts, 
That's when the motherboard has an auto shutdown feature to save all the components from overheating and any potential damage. Usually, if, in order for these things to even happen, you either have to literally have your Xbox 360 trying to perform the old towel trick, which purposely softens the, uh, the contacts to try to get the three red rings to temporarily be fixed. Um, it could also happen if the fans literally stop working and the motherboard is feeding 12 volts to dead fans and in, and the fans are not even spinning. Um, how else could it happen? Really, those are the only two things. I don't, if, or, or unless you literally have the Xbox 360 in the most non-ventilated area, which is pretty much the same as just wrapping your Xbox 360 in a blanket for the towel trick. So as you can see, I installed the, uh, Whisper Legacy fans here. Instead of me running the nitro switch and all of that, just to get so I can able be able to switch between five volt mode, five volt fluctuation mode actually, or just straight twelve volt from the DVD drive connector, which I'm I'm pretty much trying to plug out right now. Like I said before, I couldn't do that because the case is, the case that I'm using the LED um they feed off of that DVD drive power, and it has a second um cable that's supposed to go to the DVD drive. Also, that cable is a male cable as opposed to it being female, so I still can't use the uh, the Whisper's Nitro feature. If that cable had a, another cable where one goes to the DVD drive and another one is just free, but it was a female connector, then I can use the, uh, the Whisper Legacy's Nitro feature. But I think that would probably be feeding on too much power, but who knows. Now I'm going to try to... Everything's set up. The LEDs are set up and the Whisper fan is set up. I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on to see how everything's going. Everything's running smoothly so far. The lights look the, the lights look epic in real life. It still looks nice through the video, but uh, the lights look a bit too saturated and uh, way too bright. But in real life, it looks a lot more mellow and just that much more... Um, <clears throat> clearer and more vivid but that's what you can expect anything for anything to look better in real life as opposed to being recorded uh immediately i can i can um hear the difference between the whisper fans and the original fans the whisper fans are significantly quieter but i don't really feel much more air being moved um, I can they to me they feel like they move around the same air, but the whisper fans are significantly more quieter. So stay tuned for part two, and thanks for watching this video, guys. Later.